The F-35 Lightning II is one of America's most iconic fighter aircraft. Only a close second to the feared F-22 Raptor. Its visionary innovations have been both bane and blessing. The plane's design has received admiration and appreciation globally. It stood as a reminder that American engineering and ingenuity could achieve the seemingly impossible while ushering in the new age of military aeronautics. The F-35's story begins with the Joint Strike Fighter Program, which aimed to create a new generation of Stovall aircraft that could replace the landmark F-16. The nation's industry titans competed for access to the resulting contract. McDonnell Douglas, Northrop Grumman, Boeing, and Lockheed Martin worked tirelessly to present their most innovative designs as offerings. However, Lockheed's revolutionary reheated turbofan augmented thrust engine with its futuristic lift system would win the coveted opportunity. While Boeing's design certainly came with less challenges than Lockheed's, the Department of Defense determined that Lockheed's pioneering lift fan system's superior performance far outweighed its risks. And so, the historic company would join the US government on a journey to permanently change the standards and capabilities of the modern jet fighter. The backbone of the F-35 program would be its unprecedented Pratt & Whitney F-135 engine. The company would join teams with Rolls-Royce and Hamilton Sundstrand to create a revolutionary propulsion system that allowed for shatteringly short takeoff times. Rolls-Royce would develop the lift system, which was conceived using seminal new technology. Unlike the Yak-38, which used separate lift engines or the rotating nozzles of the Harrier, the new engine used a highly flexible thrust vectoring nozzle that could provide the needed lift. The F-135's nozzle was also capable of withstanding afterburn temperatures. The nozzle would direct thrust in any direction the pilot needed to carry out a wide range of landing and takeoff capabilities while maintaining significant stealth. In order to achieve vertical flight, the propulsion system equipped a whopping 29,000 horsepower. To this day, the technology, ingenuity, and genius that went into designing the F-135 is considered one of, if not the greatest feat in the aeronautical history of America, for which it won the esteemed Collier Trophy. It was billed as a fighter jet that could do almost everything the US military desired, serving the Air Force, Marine Corps, and Navy, and even Britain's Royal Air Force and Royal Navy, all in one aircraft design. It's supposed to replace and improve upon several current and aging aircraft types with widely different missions. It's marketed as a cost-effective, powerful multi-role fighter airplane significantly better than anything potential adversaries could build in the next two decades. Lockheed Martin said the plane would be far better than current aircraft, quote, four times more effective in air-to-air -air combat and eight times more effective in air-to-ground combat. Not only that, but also three times more effective in recognizing and suppressing an enemy's air defenses. It would, in fact, be 
second only to the F-22 in air superiority. In addition, the F-35 was to have better range and require less logistics support than current military aircraft. The Pentagon is still calling the F-35, quote, the most affordable, lethal, supportable, and survivable aircraft ever to be used. Like the F-117 and F-22, the F-35's stealth capability greatly reduces but does not eliminate its radar cross-section. The signal that radar receivers see bouncing back off an airplane. The plane looks smaller on radar, perhaps like a bird rather than a plane, but is not invisible. The F-35 is designed to be stealthy primarily in the X-band, the radar frequency range most commonly used for targeting in air-to-air -air combat. Of course, radar is not the only way to locate and target an aircraft. One can also use an aircraft's infrared emissions, which are created by friction-generated heat as it flies through the air along with its hot engines. Several nations, particularly the Russians, have excellent passive infrared search and tracking systems that can locate and target enemy aircraft with great precision, sometimes using lasers to measure exact distances but without needing radar. It is also very common in air-to-air -air battles for opposing planes to come close enough that their pilots can see each other. Lockheed Martin and the Pentagon say the F-35's superiority over its rivals lies in its ability to remain undetected, giving it, quote, first look, first shot, first kill. The F-35 program is the result of the merging or combination of several other separate and diverse projects into a set of requirements for an airplane that is trying to be everything to everybody. In combat, the difference between winning and losing is often not very great, with second place all too often meaning death. The Pentagon seeks to provide warriors with the best possible equipment. The best tools are those that are tailor-made to address specific missions and types of combat. For a fighter airplane, funding decisions become a balancing act of procuring not just the best aircraft possible, but enough of them to make an effective force. This has led to the creation of so-called multi-role fighter aircraft, capable both in air-to-air -air combat and against ground targets. Where trade-offs have to happen, designers of most multi-role fighters emphasize aerial combat strength, reducing air-to-ground capabilities. The F-35 is an excellent piece of equipment, despite its shortcomings. Fourth-generation fighters hailing from three nations, including F-16 Fighting Falcons, F-15 Eagles, and Eurofighter Typhoons, coordinated with E-8 Joint STARS Command, as their stealthy escorts, both F-22 Raptors and F-35 Joint Strike Fighters surveyed the battle space. Soon, cockpit displays in each aircraft began to light up and alarms sounded, indicating that the formation was being painted by multiple radar arrays tied to surface-to-air missiles and inbound fighters. Enemy fighters sporting the color schemes of Russian Su-30s began to close in. Travolis Simmons, commander of the 57th Adversary Tactics Group, noted that on the last week of a red flag exercise, we really throw everything we have at the Blue Force and replicate the toughest adversary possible. Ultimately, the F-35 fighter jet won the day, breaking down one of the world's most advanced air defense networks and relaying the Gata to missile-packed fighters like the F-16. The F-35 can fly at speeds as high as Mach 1.6 and can carry an internal payload of four weapons without compromising its stealth. But it's not the F-35's firepower that really makes the difference. It's the computing power. It's why F-35s have come to be known as quarterbacks in the sky or a computer that happens to fly. Major Justin Hazard Lee an Air Force F-35 pilot instructor, noted that, quote, there has never been an aircraft that provides as much situational awareness as the F-35. In combat situational awareness, the F-35 is worth its weight in gold. The aircraft we know today as the F-35 was built to meet the demands of multiple fighting forces with a single, highly capable aircraft. 
This new joint strike fighter, Pentagon officials believed, would allow for streamlined logistical supply lines, maintenance, and training. It would also leverage the same stealth technologies found in the F-22. With a laundry list of requirements from the US Navy, Air Force, DARPA, and soon the UK and Canada, the Joint Strike Fighter program quickly moved from its official proposal in 1995 to two competitive prototypes in 1997. Lockheed Martin's X-35 and Boeing's X-32. And the new fighter had its work cut out for it. The Joint Strike Fighter needed to replace at least five different aircraft across all the different services, including the high-speed interceptor F-14 Tomcat and the tank-killing close air support A-10 Thunderbolt II. Designed from the ground up to prioritize low observability, the F-35 may be the stealthiest fighter in operation today. It uses a single F-135 engine that produces 40,000 pounds of thrust, with the afterburner engaged, capable of pushing the sleek but husky fighter to speeds as high as Mach 1.6. The aircraft can carry four weapons internally while flying in contested airspace, or can be outfitted with six additional weapons mounted on external hardpoints when flying in low-risk environments. The F-35A also comes equipped with an internal four-barrel, 25mm rotary cannon, hidden behind a small door to minimize radar returns, allowing the F-35 to engage both airborne and ground-based targets. Lockheed Martin has developed a new internal weapons carriage that will eventually allow it to carry an additional two missiles internally. The cockpit of the F-35 foregoes the litany of gauges and screens found in previous generations of fighter, in favor of large touch screens and a helmet-mounted display system that allows the pilot to see real-time information. This helmet also allows the pilot to look directly through the aircraft, thanks to the F-35's distributed aperture system, also known as DAS, and a suite of six infrared cameras mounted strategically around the aircraft. In an interview with the New York Times, Tom Burbage, Lockheed's general manager of the program from 2000 to 2013, said that, quote, If you were to go back to the year 2000, and somebody said, I can build an airplane that is stealthy and has vertical takeoff and landing capabilities, and can go supersonic, most people in the industry would have said, that's impossible. The technology to bring all of that together into a single platform was beyond the reach of industry at that time. While both the X-32 and X-35 prototypes performed well, the deciding factor in the competition may have been the F-35's complicated short takeoff and vertical landing flight. Because the US Marine Corps intended to use this new plane as a replacement for the AV-8B Harrier jump jets, America's new stealth fighter had to be able to fill the same vertical landing short takeoff role. The lift fan design used in the X-35 connected the engine at the back of the aircraft to a drive shaft that would power a large fan installed in the aircraft's fuselage behind the pilot. When hovering, the F-35 would orient its engine downward, not unlike the X-32, but it would also pull air from above the aircraft and force it down through the fan and out the bottom, creating two balanced sources of thrust that made the aircraft far more stable. It also helped the F-35 notch a win in the looks category. Rick Resbeck, an engineer at Lockheed, said, quote, You can look at the Lockheed Martin airplane and say, that looks like what I would expect a modern, high-performance, high-capable jet fighter to look like. You look at the Boeing airplane, and the general reaction is, I don't get it. Ultimately, Lockheed Martin won out over Boeing's unusual-looking X-32 prototype in October of 2001. The future looks bright for the newly named F-35. While Lockheed's lift fan approach to Stovall flight might have nabbed the contract, the hard part was just beginning. Choosing to begin with the least complex iteration of the new fighter, Lockheed's Skunk Works started designing the F-35A intended for use in the U.S. Air Force as a traditional runway fighter like the F-16 Fighting Falcon. 
Once the F-35A was complete, the engineering team would then move on to more complex Stovall F-35B for use by the US Marine Corps. And then finally, the F-35C, meant for carrier duty. There was just one problem. Jamming all the necessary hardware for the different variants into a single fuselage proved extremely difficult. By the time Lockheed Martin wrapped up design work on the F-35A and got to work on the B, they realized the weight estimates they had established while designing the Air Force variant would lead to an aircraft that was 3,000 pounds too heavy. This miscalculation created a significant setback. To truly understand the F-35, you have to understand its variants and their differing capabilities. The F-35A is intended for use by the US Air Force and many allied nations. The F-35A is the conventional takeoff and landing CTOL variant. This aircraft is intended to operate out of traditional airstrips and is the only version of the F-35 to come equipped with a 25mm internal cannon, allowing it to step in for both the F-16 multi-role fighter and the flying cannon A-10 Thunderbolt II, among many others. The F-35B was purpose-built for short takeoff and vertical landing operations, or Stovall, and was designed with the needs of the US Marine Corps in mind. While still able to operate off of traditional runways, the Stovall capability offered by the F-35B allows Marines to operate these jets from austere runways or off the decks of amphibious assault ships, often referred to as lightning carriers. And finally, the F-35C is the first stealth fighter ever designed for carrier operations with the US Navy. It boasts larger wings than its peers, to allow for slower approach speeds when landing on a carrier. More robust landing gear aids in tough carrier landings, and it harbors a larger fuel supply, roughly 20,000 pounds worth, internally, to support longer range missions. The C is also the only F-35 equipped with the folding wings, allowing for easier storage in the hull of ships. Lockheed Martin's team would eventually work out the finer points of each different platform. So what really separates the pricey F-35 from the fighter jets that have come before? Two words, data management. Today's pilots have to manage a huge amount of information while flying, and doing so means splitting your time between traveling the speed of sound and a collage of screens, gauges, and sensor readouts screaming for your attention. Unlike previous fighter jets, the F-35 uses a combination of heads-up display and helmet-based augmented reality to keep vital information directly in the pilot's field of view. Some of the plane's helmet's features include every Generation 3 being customized to its owner's head to prevent slippage during flight and to ensure that the displays appear in correct locations. To do this, technicians scan each pilot's head, mapping every feature and translating it into the helmet's inner lining. Pilots used to have to switch over to a mounted night vision attachment when flying in the dark. The Generation 3 helmet projects a night vision reading of the surrounding environment directly onto the visor when the pilot switches the system on. The shell is made of carbon fiber, which is what gives it its characteristic checkered pattern. A tight coil of bound cables comes out of the back of the helmet to connect it to the plane. When the wearer turns his head in a specific direction, the wires feed the helmet the proper camera footage. The communication system has active noise cancellation. Speakers produce a sound that opposes wind noise and the low frequency hum of the jet engines so pilots can hear clearly. The F-35 fuses everything into a green dot if you are looking at a good guy and a red dot if it's a bad guy. It's very pilot friendly. All the information is shown on a panoramic cockpit display that is essentially two giant iPads. It's not just how the information reaches the pilot, but also how it's collected. The F-35 is capable of gathering information from a wide variety of sensors located on the aircraft and from information sourced from ground vehicles, drones, 
other aircraft, and nearby ships. It collects all of that information, as well as network-driven data about targets and nearby threats, and spits it all out into a single interface the pilot can easily manage while flying. With a god's eye view of the area, F-35 pilots can coordinate efforts with fourth generation aircraft, making them deadlier in the process. The F-35 is the quarterback of the battlefield. Its job is to make everyone around it better. Fourth generation fighters like the F-16 and F-15 will be relevant until at least the late 2040s. Because there are so many more of them than the F-35, the job of F-35 pilots is to use their unique assets to shape the battlefield and make it more survivable for other planes. All of that information may sound daunting, but for fighter pilots who have experienced the daunting task of compiling information from a dozen different screens and gauges, the F-35's user interface is nothing short of miraculous. Tony Wilson, who served in the US Navy for 25 years prior to joining Lockheed Martin as a test pilot, has flown over 20 different aircraft, from helicopters to the U-2 spy plane and even a Russian MiG-15. According to him, the F-35 is by far the easiest aircraft to fly that he's come across. He notes that as we move into fourth generation fighters like the F-16, we moved from being pilots to being sensor managers. Now, with the F-35, sensor fusion allows us to take some of that sensor management responsibility off the pilot's hands, allowing them to be true tacticians. In May of 2018, the Israeli Defense Force became the first nation to send F-35s into combat, conducting two airstrikes with the F-35As in the Middle East. By September of the same year, the US Marine Corps sent their first F-35Bs into the fight, engaging ground targets in Afghanistan followed by the U.S. Air Force using their F-35As for airstrikes in Iraq in April 2019. Today, over 500 F-35 Lightning IIs have been delivered to nine nations and are operating out of 23 air bases around the world. That's more than Russia's fleet of fifth-generation Su-57s and China's fleet of J-20s combined. With literally thousands more on order, the F-35 promises to be the backbone of U.S. air power. And unlike previous fighter generations, the F-35's capabilities are expected to keep up with the times. Thanks to software architecture designed to allow the F-35 to receive frequent updates, the aircraft's form has stayed the same, but its function has already changed radically. The airplane that took flight in 2006 may have looked identical on the outside, but it was a very different aircraft than the one flying today. And the F-35 flying 10 years from now is going to be very different from the one flying today. The F-35 will also serve as a test bed for technologies that will become commonplace in the next generation of jets. Flying in coordination with AI-enabled drones will become a staple of any sixth generation fighter and those new fighter tricks will likely first arrive in the form of the F-35. According to many pilots and experts, it may well be the most capable, most connected, most survivable aircraft on the face of the planet. And what we're able to achieve with it today shows that we can't even imagine what tomorrow's F-35 is going to be capable of. So was the F-35 an obliterating headache or a good omen? Only time will tell if the US government's investment was worthwhile. So far, it seems to be paying off.